A viewer raised an interesting point in the comments of one of our videos. The question was whether it is possible to enable a single selection in some dropdowns and have multiple selections in others. The answer is yes. You can do this by combining data validation and VBA macros. Hey there Excel enthusiasts, welcome to Excel Demi, your go-to destination for mastering Excel and Excel VBA related challenges. I'm Shahriyar Abra Rafid and in today's video, I'll be showing a detailed guide on how to customize single or multiple selections for different drop-down lists. So let's roll up our sleeves and get started. For this tutorial, I'll be using Microsoft Excel 365. In column B, I have the customer IDs. In column C, I have to add the number of items purchased. Let's say someone purchased 3 items. I'll enter 3 here. In column D, I can select these 3 items from the list of available items. So if I type 1 in column C, I can only select 1 item from the list. Therefore, I can select the number of items in column D based on the number of items present in column C. First, I have to apply data validation in the columns items selected. So, select cells in the D5 to D8 range, go to the Data tab, in the Data Tools group of commands, click on the Data Validation option. The Data Validation dialog box appears. In the Allow box, select List. In the Source box, select the cell range and click OK. By default, data validation allows you to select a single item from the list. To add multi-selection, we need the help of VBA macros. All the VBA macros in these videos have been developed by one of our brightest team members, Lutfo Raman Shimanto. Currently, he is working as an Excel and VBA developer. Right-click on the Sheet tab. From the context menu, select the View Code option. It will open the Microsoft Visual Basic for Applications window. This code window is exclusive to this sheet, so the VBA macro will work for this sheet only. Now, I'll paste my VBA code into the VBA editor. You can find all the VBA codes linked in the description box. This line declares a global variable named List Count of the long data type. I'll use it to keep track of the number of items selected. This sets up an event handler that runs automatically whenever there is a change in the worksheet. If a change occurs in column C, the corresponding cell in column D is cleared with the help of the offset property. If a change occurs in column D, the code begins the process of multiple or single selection. Declare two variables to store the old and new values in the target cell. It handles errors and checks if the target cell has data validation. If the cell range doesn't contain data validation, then the program exits the subroutine. If the target cell is empty, then it sets list count to 1 and exits the subroutine. Application.enableEvents is equal to false. This line temporarily disables events, stores the new value in the new val variable, then undoes the last action and stores the target value in the old val variable. If the cell was initially empty and the number of items selected is within the allowed range, then it sets the new value and increases the list count by 1. If the new value is not in the list and the number of items selected is within the allowed range, then the program concatenates the new value to the existing values with the ampersand operator and increases the list count by 1. Otherwise, the target value is set as the old value. It re-enables events, allowing the normal functioning of worksheet events. You don't need to run this macro like the typical one. It will operate on its own when a change occurs in the target columns of the worksheet. Also, to apply this macro in different columns, just change the column letters C and D according to your requirements. Let's close the VB editor. If you want to clear all the entries at once, you can add a button for it. First, insert a shape and apply the necessary formatting. Now, I'll use another VBA macro, but this time I'll insert the code in a module. First, I will enable the Developer tab. Right click on any tab on the ribbon and select Customize the ribbon option. In the Excel Options window, check the box of Developer option and click OK. Hence, the Developer tab is now visible. Go to the Developer tab in the Code group of commands, select Visual Basic. It will open the Microsoft Visual Basic for Applications window again. Here you can see our previously used sheet code module. Let's close it, go to the Insert tab, select Module, I'll paste my second VBA code here. Here I have defined the last row variable to hold numbers. This line counts the rows in column C up to the last used row and stores it in the last row variable. 
if last row is greater than 4, then all the contents from C5 up to the last rows are cleared. Now it's time to assign this macro to the shape we have just created. Let's close the VBA editor, right click on the shape and select the assign macro option. In the assign macro dialog box, select our recently created VBA macro and click OK. The macro is connected to this shape. Now let's use these drop down lists. In cell C5, type 1. Go to cell D5 and expand the drop down list. Select the item that the customer purchased. Try to choose another item but it won't work. In cell C6, write down 3. Now go to the corresponding cell in column D and select an item. Again click on the drop down, select another item. Look, it gets added after the first selected item with a comma. You can select a total of 3 items in that drop down as you wrote 3 in the C column. In this case, you can use a maximum of 8 because there are a total of 8 distinct items available. To clear all the entries, just click on this button and see the result. This has some limitations also. You cannot insert the number of items purchased all at once and then select the items from the drop down. Instead, you have to enter the number of items in column C and then choose the items in column D. Let's see what happens if you do this. The first row works well, but in the lower rows you cannot choose the desired number of items. This is due to the list count variable not resetting its value to 1. Also you cannot select duplicate items in a single cell. Only unique items can be selected in a cell. Lastly you should select the items from top to bottom order, otherwise you may run into errors. Download the workbook from the description box so you can practice it yourself. If you have any questions, suggestions or feedback, please let us know in the comment section. You can have a glance at exceldemy.com or join our thriving Exceldemy community forum where you can post your Excel and VBA challenges and get solutions from experts and fellow users. If you like this video, consider subscribing and click the bell icon. Thanks for watching.